Hello everyone, um, the story I'm going to read for, to you today is uh, an unpublished story, erotic story, that I wrote in 2010 and one of the, the dancers that um, uh, did one of the shows for us um, for Beleskitz Breast Cancer mentioned in the last video um, was uh, a She's a girl, larger girl, and um, she was brilliant in the show. And she started to uh, promote and run her own show um, involving all big girls. Um, so it, it was, I think it was called something along the lines of BBW burlesque. BBW meaning big, beautiful woman. And um, I went to one of her shows and she was great. And the other girls on, on the on the card weren't so great and uh, she said oh we, we've got um, a, another show coming up but it's going to be a little bit different we've got some comedians on um, we would like um, someone to read some erotica out uh, do you have any BBW themed stories and I thought to myself I don't think I did um, at the time um, if you look at my kind of track record in terms of partners and women and everything, um, you would think that, you know, I had a penchant for, for um, larger ladies um, sometimes. Um, but I like, you know, women of, of all sizes and shapes. Uh, but, um, but I hadn't written a story with a someone clearly that was larger in stature. So that got me thinking. I was like, oh, right, well, okay. Um, yeah, um, no, what I'll do is I'll write you something specific for the show. And this is how I came to do this story. And I've been going through... Um, I've been going through a series of stories I was writing um, for my non-erotic stuff where um, the background of each story was... Um, a famous, um, or it was it was a song. So I would base a lot of the stuff that I was writing with some of the lyrics, even though that they were true stories and everything. And I was doing some fiction as well, um, based on um, songs and song titles and things. So the only song that, I, that came to me at the time was the song that I was out at the time um, was was about kind of BBW and everything. Um, it, it was a song called Big Girls You Are Beautiful by Mika, which was out at the time. So I, I thought I would write a song about that. I pulled up the lyrics and uh, it mentioned a place called the Butterfly Lounge, which is um, a, a club in, in Los Angeles where Mika's from. I don't know Los Angeles, but I thought, you know, give it a bash. Um... And um, so I thought I would incorporate um, the place that he mentions and the, the theme of celebration of big girls and I would write a story. And so I write, wrote a story and it's called Peaches Fondue, which is um, the, um, the name of uh, a burlesque stripper um, that I created um, through a... Um, stripper thing online where you kind of like regurg you know it kind of makes up kind of stripper names just this this kind of like thing online and uh, it came up with peaches fondue so i thought let's let's work with that i'm a big fan of the, of the actual person peaches so yeah um go with that and um yeah so this is uh peaches fondue the story uh so yeah it's at the moment it's it's unpublished and it's only been read out once at this show that we went to do in London. I can't remember. It was it was in King's Cross somewhere, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a really good night, and uh, the, the best part of the night was I I got the um, the DJ to play the actual song as I was finishing, and I got I made sure uh, I got all of the girls that were in the show. Because I was near towards the end. 
and I got all the girls from the show to kind of come onto the stage and kind of like fake interrupt me and um, and then we all started dancing to the song after I started uh, after I finished uh, reading the story so it was it was quite cool yeah so yeah this is Peaches Fondue <clears throat> and the character's mill you're cut get out of here Jimbo announced my boss taking the crate of Sam Adams from me it was dead at my crummy bar job in Long Beach, so I hit the bricks and pondered on taking a stop off on the way home, because I fancied taking him some flesh. I'm not talking about any kind of flesh. I wasn't thinking in terms of a brothel or being frustrated at some titty bar, while some string out single mother hard nor look pretends to be interested in me while she sticks her double F implants into my face. No. I mean, I want some flesh. Some real flesh. Natural flesh. Flesh that spills out. Flesh to hold on to. A girl with curves and in all the right places. A big girl. A big, beautiful girl. But not any beautiful big girl. One in particular. In a suburb called Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa a 30 minute drive away. Her name? Peaches Fondue. And no, that ain't the new offspring and future celebrity from Angie and Brad or Tom Cruise. This is someone entirely different. As I neared and came off the, hi the as I neared and came off the highway, I considered hitting the Massa sushi, sushi for some omakase, but decided to pull into Domenico's instead, as I felt like getting my pizza on. I opted for a large slice of their Hawaiian with anchovies and capers and sat in my car in the lot, sucking on a Diet Coke. I remember this area back in the 70s, man. I used to come down this way a lot. Hell. I was still underage then, but older looking friends into bikes used to get me in liquor in, and into places that I shouldn't have been. This, There was this country bar a couple of blocks down called Zuby's and a punk place called The Cuckoo's Nest. Come to think of it, that should have really been the other way around with names like that. I get confused where, I get confused where, but I saw the Cramps, the Go-Go's and the, Ram the Ramones at different periods. I chowed down on my slice. Drained my drink to the ice, put my seatbelt back on and swung round onto 19th Street, pulling up outside my destination, the Butterfly Lounge. The Butterfly Lounge is the country's first size acceptance club, or at least that's what their flyer claims. It's a place where the larger lady goes and doesn't feel intimidated. She has a few drinks, a lot of dancing, and at times watches other grand dames peel and twirl to burlesque anthems. At tonight's star turn... It's Peaches Fondue. Hey big boy, what can I get you? The chick behind the bar says to me. Maker's Mark, on the rocks, dash lime. I sipped up my drink and checked the place out. A cute black girl in the booth on her own winked at me while I moved casually from side to side on my stool. I smiled back and held my glass up to her. I turned back to the bar and before long I felt a presence behind me. Buy me a drink, the winker suggested as I called for the bartender. I turned towards her and introduced myself. She ordered herself a Lynchburg lemonade and I threw down a Hamilton. She seemed pretty confident and full of herself, but not in a blasé way. A good way. That's what I love about this place. It gives the girls the freedom to be who they want to be. To not be afraid to show off what they have and two guys like them, that, uh, that they like. Guys that... Are, guys that... Guys they know that are into girls of size, without fear of being knocked back or majorly spurned and ridiculed, like maybe they would in a normal club. The chick was about a size 18 and change. She was rocking a flowing skirt and matching wild purple eyeshadow, plus a generously filled halter neck top. The cleavage action? Well, I'm sure you can imagine. So you like big girls, white boy? Pretty much, I said, not giving much away. What do you like about them? I sighed. You really want to know? Sure, why not? Skinnier girls. I don't know, man. They just lie there sometimes. Lie there, she laughed at me. Yeah, they just lie there and take it and they don't do nothing. Or they feel like they don't have to do nothing. And big girls, they can fuck. Man, they know how to fuck. God, they're enthusiastic. Fuck, fuck, fuck. They love it. Once you get them going, jeez wheeze. They grab you. They bite you. They claw you. They damn near devour you is what I'm saying, and I love it.
The girl looked at me, slack-jawed, offended and all. What? I cried. She turned on her heavy heel and walked away from me. I turned back to the bartender, another heavy-set dame. I shrugged as she rolled her eyes at me while polishing glass beer mugs with, I'm sorry, the filthiest-looking towel I've ever seen in my life. Am I wrong? I called to her. She shook her head. Well, she started, a whole lot of women needs a whole lot more. Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. I might have been quite forthright and explicit with her, but she picked up that free drink, I thought. The barmaid continued. Well, hey, you can take your skinny girl. She'll make you look good when you walk down the street. A lot of folks will look at you and be envious, but I tell you, man, a real woman needs a real man, and a bigger girl would be like your hot skinny girl, but multiplied by four. Right, sure, I said, but then I know this already. Yeah? Uh-huh. I wake up next to a big, beautiful girl every morning. Oh, so what brings you here? Why aren't you home at looking after her? I shrugged and emitted some sort of noise of non-committal straining and glanced towards the stage where the compere was appearing. I ordered a Budweiser and the girl looked at me funny. Don't be mixing your drinks and getting all funny on me, sugar. I looked at her, annoyed, and threw down another ten. Trust me, I'm off after this. I took a seat at one of the small tables down at the front of the stage and eagerly anticipated her arrival. The gregarious man with the painted face, announcing stuff flourished and flounced as he built up the entrance of my current obsession, Miss Fondue. I had seen Peaches a few times before. It wasn't in this venue, but she had pr performed in front of me at other L.A. cabaret spots. The pumping sounds of an old rockabilly track started. The flash of drums and a Gibson guitar rang out as she skipped with a beaming smile. She took a chair from the stage left and sat on it with the, the back facing us. She stretched her wonderfully chunky legs around it and fell back gracefully to the music before launching from it and moving towards us. Fondue kicked from the chair. Fondue kicked the chair from behind like Madonna in the girly show and picked at her garter belt for us. The music continued and she dropped her skirt to show off all that, she, that was there. Those lovely vast folds of skin, frilly bloomers and yet more skin to feast our eyes upon. She wandered around, taking off numerous items and leaving those dainty feet in those tight restrictive stockings and trotted about throwing dance lesson taut shapes. The nights I spent lying awake, thinking about those luscious thighs, what it would be like to have them wrapped around my neck, you wouldn't believe. And my mind wandered. She suddenly stopped in her tracks and caught my eye. She kicked off her shoes and pointed at me with a, with a naughty look on her face. I had no idea what she had in mind for me, but I was intrigued. She got on her hands and knees and crawled my way before sitting on the edge of the stage and slipping off it, coming towards me. Peaches cocked her head and placed a hand in to her mouth in fake shock. She took the beer bottle from my table and sashayed back towards the side of the stage, climbing the steps and and back to where she started. She placed it on the table and at, at the other side, returned to centre and reached for the clip between her breasts to release those spectacular pendulums. The brass sailed across the stage and hit the rear curtain as Peaches cupped her jugs and flicked the, the tassels stuck to her nipples. She grinned, pouted and then glanced towards my beer bottle. She looked back into the crowd, gave them a mis very mischievous look and strode over to the table. She fingered the neck of my bud, dropped it like it was hot and ground her hips into the floor before taking it above her head and poured it down into her tits. It frothed and bubbled as it coated her belly, covering it all and sucking the stage. I looked around as the crowd whooped and hollered as the track stopped. Peaches bowed, stretched her arms and dashed off. I ordered another maker's mark at the bar and felt deliciously satisfied. Enjoyed that? asked the girl behind the bar. Oh yes, it ticked all of my boxes. Minutes later, I lit up a cigarette as I sat on the hood of the Datsun. A fire door opened and a figure appeared. She was wrapped up in a long coat and a woolly scarf and pulling a garish pink suitcase. She noticed me and wandered over it in her high patent leopard skin stilettos. I jumped into the driver's seat and rummaged for the keys. She stopped for a moment and then walked around the other side, opened the door, climbed in and helped herself to a Marlboro Red. I looked at her and she looked at me quizzically. I moved off with my new passenger and swung onto the highway. I grinned at her and broke at a red light. A 
The scruffy old man with a shopping cart crossed the street in front of us. I looked across to my partner and saw a thick plume of smoke drift from her full ruby red lips. Keys crashed onto the stripped flooring. A door refused to close properly and a number of times a leg searched for it as mouths ferociously gnawed at each, uh, each other. Bags and coats were thrown askew and covered umbrella stands at the, at the backs of chairs. Hands grabbed, arms tangled in, in clothing. Feet hopped out of more fabric and kicked off shoes and other accessories in the way of passion and lust of two people. The bed near collapsed as our bodies made contact. We almost sank to the earth as we disappeared into the mattress with the force of our contact, before the springs raised up us back. My hands ran across her flesh. The voluptuous curves sucked my hands into the rolls of her body, including that one between her chunky thighs. This in itself... A hot and wet patch of fire, a volcanic hue of mass proportions spewing lava and goo that could cover and destroy small villages. The same that would soon surround my blood-filled member, her whole being, her stomach, her breasts, her long locks covered and near suffocated me as I filled her. The whites of her eyes rolled backwards and she cried in ecstasy. That was a great idea you had tonight, darling, she said, rolling over onto one side. What's that then, wife of mine? I replied, pulling the duvet back over us as we reach for another, for one another and into a loving, familiar embrace. The beer bottle, it was genius. I am to please. You put enjoying performing more then? Well, I don't feel like a big balloon anymore. That's good, Miss Peaches. Now let's celebrate some more. Um, so that's uh, an unreleased... Um, unreleased story uh, and uh, I think I'll put that in, into uh, in the next compilation of erotic stories that I'll do uh, at some point and uh, it's it's really good I really enjoy this because um, it made me more than the other stories that I wrote based on lyrics I got to use more lyrics in this story um, the big balloon um, and other, other stuff at the beginning. Um, I used a lot of the lyrics from the song. So, read this. If you like this, go and look um, at the, the video as well because um, that will give you some good context. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, 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 it was really fun kind of taking a song and, um, yeah, using the lines from the song into... Um, into this and it really kind of helped me create this uh, the story in this world uh, so I'm glad I uh, hope you liked it and um, if you like this and want to see more um, share and subscribe subscribe to the channel and um, hopefully I'll see you soon thanks